The Lich King has returned. Skeletal warriors and an ever-growing number of crypt ghouls and other foul creatures march under his command. Having established a foothold on the region, Arkan the Black must now awaken his full legions if he is to expand further in Araby and make way for his objective. As the most ancient and loyal of Nagash's followers, Arkan must fight his way to the Black Pyramid in order to bring the great necromancer back to life. This will not be an easy task, however, as many forces now acknowledge that the Lich King is back and they are determined to stop any attempt at resurrecting the Gash. This is a narrative campaign set in Total War Warhammer 2. In this second episode, Arkan the Black will attempt to shatter all opposition set against him in the unforgiving deserts of Araby before uniting the remnants of the great necromancer for his inevitable resurrection. To experience the full story, make sure to watch the first episode of this narrative campaign. If you are enjoying the series, please consider subscribing and sharing this video with your fellow Warhammer fans. The Knights of the Flame and mobs of peasants lay dead by the hundreds, the traces of the battle quickly disappearing under the shifting sands of the tainted place. The battle for Wizard Caliph's palace was over, and it had come to a great cost for the Bretonian Knights. The Lich King had learned that even more mortal fools were in the settlement of Lashik to the north. The place was not unguarded, however, as Lorenzo Morian, an errant knight, was at the head of the defenses of the coastal settlement. When Lorenzo learned of the dire fate of his fellow knights, he knew that the rumors were true. Arkham the Black was back. Meanwhile, in the Atalan Mountains, Skullson, the veteran dwarf lord, continued his deadly war with the beastmen hordes of the Blood Axe tribe. He was forced to defend the settlements on the mountain ranges against the unrelenting enemy and Arkin was sure that for the time being, he would not interfere. And even if he did, Prince Sarthus would be ready with his forces to deal with any incursion from the Dowling. It was the right time to march north and erase the settlement of Lashik of all life. The Lich King awakened vast legions of skeletons and ghouls under his command. Deadly chariots made of heavy, well-protected platforms were put together. The armored carriages were covered in gilded images of skulls and bones. They were carried forward by skeletal horses that charge into battle with great speed. More constructs were put together and Arkin bolstered his forces while dark magic flowed heavily through him. The Lich Priest Berecht oversaw the awakening of the skeletal hordes and ancient constructs. When the preparations were ready, the signal was given, and the undead host marched north. The fate of the errant knights was sealed. The skeletal warriors marched silently under the burning heat of the sun. Only the sounds of rusty bones, the bestial barks and the ghouls, and the clanking of golden armor could be heard. The legions could march for days without stopping. They did not tire as they were fully animated by the dark magic flowing where the Lich King traveled. When Arkin and his legions were crossing the river that divided Lashik from the rest of the land of assassins, they found an enemy host many times bigger than expected. A line of mounted knights and ranks of armed peasants was completely blocking their way to the settlement. This was not as planned with the Lich King. Lorenzo must have received reinforcements from further north or this was the main force of the Knights of the Flame. Arkin was not sure, but it made no difference. Their flesh was to be devoured, and their bones would be broken and reformed into the army of the dead. Theodoric moved hastily amongst a unit of peasant bowmen. Small clouds of sand lifted as they advanced. They moved towards the undead horde. Their task was to get within firing distance from the enemy to provide missile support for the mountain knights who were also advancing nearby. Theodoric had a bad feeling in his gut. He had waged war before in the lands of Araby a few years ago. The barbarian tribes they had to face in those days were fierce. 
but it was nothing compared to the undead host that now moved against them. He was sure that he and every man that ran at his side would prefer to be elsewhere. But they were summoned to defend their home in Araby against this new menace. A hundred thoughts crossed his mind as he ran towards the uncertain. Suddenly, the front line stopped, and the rest of the ranks followed until the entire unit had come to a halt. With a hand gesture, the unit officer signaled his men to open fire, and Theodoric reached for his quiver. The Bretonians moved onwards, weathering a hailstorm of lethal missiles fired by skeletal hands. The undead archers fired more arrows in an unrelenting long-range attack. The knights thundered across the sands towards the bridge. Their lances brought low as they closed in on the targets. The skeletal legions and the mounted warriors clashed violently. The cavalry charge was devastating, and it sent many skeletons flying backwards. The bridge shook, and for a moment the crypt ghouls seemed confused, hesitant to engage against the seemingly unstoppable charge of the knights. But more skeleton warriors clashed against them, slowing down their charge. Shortly after, the ghouls renewed their attack and joined the fray, turning the front lines into a chaotic engagement. The best units of the Knights of the Flame were now also supported by mounted yeomen, the highest rank a peasant can aspire to. They charged with all their fury against the undead host, only to retreat briefly, regroup, and charge back again, breaking ranks and shattering bones with each heavy impact. The fight was fierce. Theodoric fired arrow after arrow into the mass of bone and twisted creatures. Screams and the clashing of weapons could be heard, and for the peasant bowmen supporting the knights, it was uncertain who had the upper hand in the front lines. Theodoric's face was already covered in sweat. The hot temperatures of the desert affected the living warriors on the battlefield but not the undead ranks. The Lich King gave a chilling order, and the chariots advanced. The charioteer legions, covered by clouds of dust, thrown into the sky as they swiftly advanced. The crunching sounds could be heard as the chariots crushed bodies beneath their heavy wheels. Shortly after the initial impact, the skeletal charioteers aboard the elevated platforms began sweeping their deadly weapons towards the confused masses of the living. The battle over the stone bridge was hard. The cracking of bones, the clashes on metal, and the screams of the living could be heard by all. Down the river, the fight was no less violent. Enhanced by dark magic, the undead renewed their attacks as newly formed skeletons took the weapons of the fallen and hurled themselves against the Bretonians. Suddenly, after hours of fighting, the heat was beginning to take its real toll amongst the living. The strength of every warrior was being sapped by the punishing sun above them, and the faces of the soldiers were full with sweat, dirt, and blood. Most of them were panting from exhaustion. The river ran hot, and steam haze drowned the armies fighting along. Amongst the ongoing battle, Arkan used his dark magic to summon his new deadly creations. A unit of Ushamti emerged from the sands, standing tall between the main Bretonian line and the archers behind. Arkan watched in delight, as the hulking statues of stone and gold, 
hacked and slashed towards the backs of the main line, where the Bretonian infantry and mounted knights fought fiercely. Theodoric and his fellow bowmen panicked as they saw the carnage getting closer and closer. The valiant knights fought like beasts, and not an inch of ground was given to the undead willingly. But regardless, the dark host gained ground with each passing second. Some moments later, finally, the line broke, and the screams of agony and panic spread like wildfire across the entire Bretonian army. As the battle unfolded, Lich Priest Berecht was witness to the downfall of the living. The dark magic unleashed by both Arkan and Berecht was quickly draining the mortal fools of all life. The tomb blade of Arkan burned away the flesh of every man it touched, knight or peasant. In agony, they fell to the sands. The chariots continued to pursue the fleeing enemies and charged against the few units that still remained. At the end of the battle, hundreds of Bretonian soldiers were dead and the hot sands were tainted with their blood. Theodoric's body ended at the bottom of a mountain of lifeless warriors. All his fellow peasant bowmen were no more. As the last cries and shouts from the fallen knights and peasants were muted forever, Arkin and Berek surveyed the battlefield. Victory was theirs, but the cost it came with had the Lich King rethinking on how to conquer the settlement of Lashik. Arkin had learned not to underestimate the Knights of the Flame, and he would not take any chance taking those walls. One thing was for sure, though. The advance of the Undead Legions would not be stopped. On this channel, we are putting together narrative Total War cinematic battles and Warhammer lore videos. A special thank you goes to our Patreon supporters who help us in the making of more content. You can also join Patreon and earn extra perks while supporting the videos to come. Find the link in the description below. Make sure to subscribe, and thank you for watching. See you on the next one.